What's up, cool people? I'm Matt Conroy, and apparently even minimal lighting is better than the indoor lighting when trying to record stuff for this. But anyway, uh, I wanted to do a bit of a follow-up on the whole seasonal affective disorder conversation thing, because there were so many other aspects that I did not even briefly mention or allude to during that whole video as to why this can be a thing for some people. And one of them is really significant and the others are just kind of minor little details and factors, but they can pile up on each other pretty easily sometimes. So first off, the big one, right around this time of year, it, it really hits people the hardest, I think, when they have experienced losses within their family or close friends or anything like that, especially if it's recent. Um, you know, you, you think of it being like the first time having this holiday without that person, and it can be a, a rather depressing type of thing to think about. And you don't want to think about it, but you kind of can't help it because the occasion comes up and you're used to having this person being there and or doing certain things for the occasion. And so, you know, that, that further contributes quite heavily for some people to feeling sad or depressed during this time of year. And, um, it also applies for people, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a recent loss. Um, there are still sometimes things that trigger a memory or different things like that. And, you know, again, it's not that you want to be sad or depressed. It's not that you want to, you know put a damper on what should otherwise be a kind of happy occasion. But again, you just kind of get triggered. Isn't quite the right word, but you just kind of get this thought that pops into your head that it's, it's there and you kind of can't help the feelings that come from it. And it, it's especially true if, a family member or a loved one was was lost on or very near that particular holiday occasion that 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 i think kind of increases the likelihood of those feelings coming up and being a significant factor years down the road that's that's really the other big one that contributes i think to the whole seasonal affective disorder thing because there are so many otherwise joyous occasions happening around this time of year. There's Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, all that kind of stuff going on. And especially if there are any other birthdays or different things like that going on. And by the way, I say Christmas, just know that I mean all of those kind of holiday traditions that happen right around that time of year. Um, I mentioned Christmas specifically being a Christian and all that. But anyway, um, so some of the other smaller factors that I think kind of play into this seasonal affective disorder thing, some of it, some of these are perceived things and some of them are actual more legitimate things. Like what I mean by perceived is that sometimes it seems like people are in a worse mood this time of year than they really are because especially as you get close to Christmas you got all these songs about it being the most wonderful time of the year. And, you know, you, you have all these catchphrases and things going on around us saying that it should be a happy time of year. So if somebody else is less happy than we are or than we expect them to be, then it can seem like they're in a worse mood than they really are when taken out of that context and put in another time of the year, it would seem like, 
eh, they're just kind of having a little bit of a bad day. No big deal. But because of that mentality of this being a joyous time of year and, you know, tis the season to be jolly, all that kind of stuff, uh, it makes us, again, think that people are in a worse mood than we would think they are any other time of the year. So that's the whole, like, perception versus reality kind of thing a little bit there. Uh, but other factors that play into this, um, you know, in addition to just the, the dreary weather and that kind of stuff, the, the coldness in most parts of the U.S. anyway, um, at least a fair number of people experience this, you know, it gets colder and you're kind of cooped up inside more. And so because you're not able to go out there and get as much fresh air and or exercise and all that kind of stuff, it kind of, it contributes a little bit to just feeling kind of trapped, feeling like, you know, there isn't as much to do. You get bored a little easier. And so that can contribute to, having a little bit worse of a mood than normal. And I, I think that also kind of stems off of and is related to the whole just lack of color kind of thing that happens. Dreary gray skies, lack of leaves on trees, different things like that. That's all kind of connected in a way. And, you know, especially when it comes to the whole getting out, getting fresh air, seeing sunshine. I mean, from what I hear, <laughs> I'm not going to confirm or deny this, but based on multiple things that I've heard over the years, uh, multiple different scientific research studies have shown that even just having brighter colors can improve your mood or, you know, more sunshine in your day can improve your mood. More interactions with other people can improve your mood. And a lot of those are lacking during the, the winter season as we head into this holiday palooza that happens towards the end of the calendar year. Which, again, contributes to the whole seasonal affective disorder idea. And, you know, again, sometimes we're kind of bad at recognizing this stuff and realizing that these things are going on. Even some of these little things that can contribute to a person being in a worse mood than normal. There could be a lot of stress on some people this time of year when it comes to, like, planning parties or other get-togethers or trying to get gifts for people and... Not being sure what gifts to get who and how much they're going to cost and all this different kind of stuff. Just that can be stressful and add to not necessarily depressed feelings, but like also feelings of frustration, annoyance. Again, just contributing to an overall bad mood <laughs> that some people can be in. So, yeah. yeah, there's a whole lot of different factors that can feed into this whole seasonal affective disorder thing. And again, I just kind of want to put this out there and I'm hoping more people will recognize it and not be so like, well, aren't you all crabby pants right now? And like... You don't know, unless you talk to them, what's going on. So, um, yeah, before you call them crabby, don't be judgy McJudger face. And, like, actually figure out what's going on with them, maybe, before you're passing judgments and kind of moving slowly away from people that seem like they're in a bad mood.
it, there are many reasons why it could be understandable. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. I think that's going to kind of wrap up this whole idea. Leave some comments down below. Um, if you have other things you want me to talk about, put those down there too. And of course, like and share the video if you enjoyed it or you want to spread the word. Um, you can subscribe to my channel and click the bell. Hopefully that'll give you updates when I post new videos and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All that info is going to be down in the description below the video. Otherwise, that's going to do it. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, hopefully this season doesn't get you too down. Um, but if it does, maybe talk to some people. Let them know what's going on. And they can help you, support you, encourage you. Hopefully, whatever's going on. Um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Stay cool, people.